Okay, so today I will be talking about ferromagnetic resonance. Uh, so ferromagnetic resonance we can understand very easily uh, if you take the analogy with uh, nuclear magnetic resonance which is NMR which I explained in previous videos. So what happens in NMR? NMR you have a single spin uh, which can which uh, um, um, you have a single spin so what will happen is you apply a static magnetic field the spin will process around that magnetic field uh, and uh, if uh, so spin will process around that magnetic field and if you apply orthogonal uh, changing field corresponding to the precision frequency you'll see a resonance okay so that is a point so now here in ferromagnetic resonance what is happening is in case of spin you have a whole magnetization now where does the magnetization come from so what is happening is ferromagnetic in the system is arising due to strong interactions in the material so here it happens to be the all the spins are aligned in particular fashion which is happening due to strong interactions okay so uh, in other words this give rise to spin wo waves also or spin ons also so but the point is you have a we have a huge coupling between the dipoles okay so they are hugely coupled which gives rise through macroscopic quantity called magnetization so in case of ferromagnetic resonance what is processing around magnetic field is magnetization not the uh, uh, not the single spin, nuclear spin, in, 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 like, like in case of NMR. So what I have drawn here is a two condition where you can uh, see this. Uh, so what I'm trying to tell you is how we can measure it also. Uh, so these are the two configuration. So this this is a magnetic field which is going in this direction. So either you are uh, now what you do is you make a, this kind of um, PCB. This is a CPW which is a called copolymer. Uh, waveguide and you put your sample upside down it's called flip chip geometry now let's say uh, what you are doing here is you uh, so in this configuration let's say the current is passing through this direction okay so it's called in plane uh, in plane uh, geometry now let's say in other case you put your sample like this your magnetic field is like this your RF is like this uh, so it's called out of plane uh, geometry so all depends upon the direction of the uh, direction of the magnetization. Okay, uh, so uh, so depending upon in plane magnetic in plane magnetic field or out of plane magnetic field, what you will happen? Uh, so what is the magnetic field? Which one is changing here? The alternate magnetic field. Okay, that's the point to be noticed. So you you'll have two different formula. Effectively, if you see, if you take you know, if your magnetization is not there in the sample, it will turn out to the Lormer frequency equation. You know, f uh, f is equal to gamma b naught, which is very very simple. That's that's all it it should boil down to in the last. Now what I want to show you is this equation. How does the dissipation arises? So Landau showed this formula in 1935 with the Lipschitz. So uh, so Gilbert gave a you know correction to this term. So this is the rate of change of magnetization. Uh, this will be your um, 90 degree pulse. Uh, we'll, we'll explain this and this is the dissipation. We'll, we'll tell. Okay. So let's say this is your uh, effective magnetic field. Now what is processing is we know magnetization. So the magnetization should process uh, to the effective magnetic field. The term which comes into the picture is this M cross H effective. Now, uh, uh, which, which it should always keep spinning, but what happens? It try to bring towards the H effective, the term which is m cross t m by t t u, so which is called dissipation factor. With the, uh, so this is the most important equation in the ferromagnetic resonance. Now, fMR can be measured by two methods. Uh, so the one is very conventional one. Well. So in which way they keep the microwave frequency constant, like f is equal to nine gigahertz, and they vary the magnetic field. Uh, at some point magnetic field the resonance occurs so that's what you see the kittel also did with uh, uh, did this experiment and theory with this method only but nowadays since you have a vna now people does uh, some, uh, with the help of vna in which you can change the field and also you can measure the response so you are uh, sorry you can change the frequency and can measure the response so this is uh, you can sweep by changing vna uh, and you can measure the amplitude which is normally in in all the cases as to one uh, so you know you keep the field constant magnetic field constant change the frequency at some frequency uh, uh, resonance will occur so that's how we measure it thank you